Hi students. In the last class, we had discussed about Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. There, a monochromatic source of light was kept at the focus of a lens and the plane wavefronts coming from it was allowed to fall on a rectangular slit, a small a having dimensions in the order of the wavelength of light. And we observed and studied the diffraction pattern formed on the screen. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the diffraction pattern that you get when you replace the rectangular slit with a circular aperture. Here, we consider a circular aperture of diameter small d as shown in the figure. Now, S is a narrow slit illuminated by a monochromatic source of light and the light rays from S are allowed to fall on a lens and the source is placed at the focal plane of this lens L1 so that the wavefronts coming out from it is plane. Now, these plane wavefronts are allowed to fall on a slit AB that is our circular aperture AB having diameter small d as marked in the figure. Now the light from the circular aperture is passes through this uh, the light from the slit or the plane wavefront coming out from the lens passes through the circular aperture and it is focused by a lens L2 onto the screen. Now we consider the different points on the screen. First, let us consider the point P. So that, now what is the speciality of this point P? Now this, our source is the central point of my circular aperture that is O and P lies in a straight line. Now if you consider such a point P, if P is the point point in the particular end, that's why our source, circular aperture in the midpoint, P. If our moon is on a straight line, it will come. Angan our point P is considered to be the secondary wavelets traveling parallel to OP. If OP is parallel, I is lit in the two pagadigal ille corresponding points in the number of light rays in a kanaka kial. They form a pair of corresponding points. A and B are a set of corresponding points. They consider form another pair of corresponding points. That is, the oil is a set of points. We have a set of points. E corresponding points in the middle of secondary wavelets. So all of them travel the same distance or they have no path difference. They have no path difference means they have no phase difference or all of them reach the point P at the same phase. That means constructive interference take place at P and we get uh, at P maximum intensity and P is called the central maxima as in the case of the rectangular slit. Rectangular slit is the same as P is the maximum intensity. Next, I consider the point P1. Some random point P1 on the screen. Now, how can I determine whether the point P1 corresponds to a maxima or a minima? P1 is a maxima or a minima. We can draw two uh, secondary wavelets. Draw the parts of two secondary wavelets coming from A and B, the two ends of my uh, slit. And find out the path difference between them. Now, since the point P1, I have marked it as, I can consider the point P1 as either lying below P or above P. Anything you can do. Now, if since it is lying below uh, P, 
Now the ray from A is travelling a longer distance than the secondary wavelet. I mean the secondary wavelet from A is travelling a longer distance than that from B. So to find how much is the difference in path between the secondary wave from A and B, I drop a perpendicular from B to A. Now this distance is my path difference. Now if theta is the angle made by these rays with the parallel, if theta is the angle of diffraction here, then in this triangle, this angle will be theta. So that my path difference is equal to d sin theta where d is the diameter of my circular aperture. So this is the path difference here just as in the case of Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. So d sin theta is equal to the path difference then how do we uh, what will be the conditions of my maxima and minima what will be the condition for p1 to be a uh, maxima what will be the condition for p1 to be a minima now i tell you that if d sin theta is equal to n lambda then the point p1 corresponds to a minima if d sin theta is equal to n lambda the um, point p1 corresponds to a minima now what is the explanation for this the explanation given is again exactly the same as that in the Fraunhofer diffraction and single slit. What we do is we divide the whole circular aperture into two halves that is AO and OB. Now I consider the path difference between the waves coming from A and O. If the total path difference is lambda then the path difference between the waves coming from A and O will be lambda by 2. Path difference is lambda by 2 means phase difference is pi. That is if one wave comes like this, the other one comes like this. That means they, when they superimpose, they cancel out each other or destructive interference take place. Similarly, if you consider the secondary waves from O and B, since the total path difference is lambda, the path difference between the waves coming from O and B will be lambda by 2 path difference lambda by 2 means they will have a phase difference of pi or again they will undergo destructive interference on superposition and you will get a minima at the point p1. The, the point p1 will now correspond to a minima. So this is the explanation given for uh, how the condition cos theta equal I mean uh, d sin theta equal to n lambda corresponds to a minima. Now if d sin theta equal to n lambda corresponds to a minima then the condition for maxima will surely be the secondary maxima. In the middle one you give it as the central maxima the most bright one and the remaining uh, orders of maxima is given as d sin theta is uh, are called principal maxima and they are given by the condition d sin theta equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. So the condition for maxima is d sin theta equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 and the condition for a minima is d sin theta is equal to in lambda. Now what is the difference then between the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern that you obtained for uh, uh, a single slit and a circular aperture. Upon namaka Fraunhofer diffraction single slit till namakan da get the Naduil is central maxima Adinde upper to import first order minima. Adinde portha first order principal maxima of some particular intensity. Adinde apartha second order minima in the second order principal maxima because second order principal maxima de intensity first order principal maxima ekal korava karena avadeke ettuna secondary wavelets inde ennam koravana pinne third order minima third order principal maxima of still further lower intensity ingeyana namaku ingane rendu vashathu idana namaku kittiya fraunhofer diffraction pattern that was the fraunhofer diffraction pattern that we obtained now mm, what is the difference between the diffraction pattern that you obtain for uh, the single slit and the circular aperture? Now, if in the, circ in the circular aperture, if the point P1 corresponds to a minima, 
now if this point of mind that is p1 corresponds to a minima then all the points on the screen which are at a distance x from p that is if the distance between p and p1 is x and p1 corresponds to a minima then all the points on the screen which is at a distance x from p that is i'll be able to trace out a circle all those points will correspond to a minima in the shape of a circle now if all the points between p and p2 corresponds to a maxima then if the uh, if the point p2 corresponds to a maxima then the all, all the points at the same distance between p and p2 will again correspond to a maxima that is again you get the second ring so my central maxima is in the form of a disk and the different orders of minima and maxima are in the form of consecutive rings in the case of fraunhofer diffraction at single slit ningalku njan parnadu manasilai nu kerudunu adayidu ipo point p1 or minima anengil p mudal p1 varayulla dooram x anengil all the points lying at a distance x from p will correspond to a minima kan appo adayidu പിയിൽ നിന്നും എക്സ് ദൂരത്തിൽ കിടക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ പോയിൻസും മിനിമയായിരിക്കും മിനിമയായിരിക്കും എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എല്ലാ എങ്ങനെയാണ് നമുക്ക് എല്ലാ പോയിൻസിനും കിട്ടുക ഇഫ് യു ഡ്രോ എ സർക്കിൾ ഓക്കെ സോ യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് എ സർക്കുലാർ ഡാർക്ക് റിങ് സോ മൈ ഫസ്റ്റ് സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ വിൽ ബി എ ബ്രൈറ്റ് ഡിസ്ക് ആൻഡ് ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് യു ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് ദാറ്റ് യു ഗെറ്റ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഓർഡേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഡാർക്ക് ആൻഡ് ബ്രൈറ്റ് റിങ്സ് വിച്ച് ആർ ദ ഡിസ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഓർഡേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മൈ മിനിമ ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഓർഡ് ആൻഡ് ദി സെക്കൻഡറി മാക്സിമ ഹിയർ അഗെയിൻ ദ ഇൻറ്റൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദി സെക്കൻഡറി മാക്സിമ വിൽ ഗോ ഓൺ ഡിക്രീസിങ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദ ഡിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ നോ ദ ഡിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ പാറ്റേൺ ഇൻ എ in front of a diffraction due to circular aperture consists of a central disk and a disk which is called a central maxima central maxima is bright disk central maxima is bright disk and outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get different orders of minima and maxima outside that you get decreases outwards from p adayid is p ennu parayna central point innum dooreku povunna anusarithu intensity koranju 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 verunna bright rings aanu namukku kittu okay so this is the diffraction pattern i hope it is very clear to all of you now if this collecting lens l2 this lens l2 is very near to my slit or if the screen is very very far away then you can uh, replace d with f so in this figure in this figure you get theta is equal to x by d x by d if i told you if the lens is very near the slit or if the screen is very very far away you can replace this theta equal to x by d with x by f the focal length of this lens also we know at the first minima d sin theta is equal to 1 lambda or for very small angles of theta theta equal to lambda by small d where d is the uh, diameter of the circular aperture so this is equal to i can replace it with lamb is equal to equate it with lambda by d or i get x is equal to f lambda by d x is equal to f lambda by d now what is this x now this x gives you the radius of the aries disk a radius of the central disk i told you which you get uh, you get the radius of the iris disk because we use the angular width of the first minima that means the extent of the first minima so you are getting now the radius of the iris disk now but by actual calculation when we did we found out that the radius of the iris disk is not equal to x equal to f lambda by d but it is slightly greater than that 
so the actual value is calculated by always multiplying this term with a factor of 1.22 that is 1.22 into f lambda by d gives you the radius of the aries disk okay so we learned two things in this session one the first one we learned and the explanation for the fraunhofer diffraction at a sing, uh, at a circular aperture the diffraction pattern consists of an aries disk with different orders of maxima and minima and maxima around it that is the aries rings around it the mm, central disk aries disk is has maximum intensity and the minimas are all uh, uh, dark rings with zero intensity and the bright rings they have their intensity gradually decreasing then we studied the expression for the correct exact actual expression for the radius of the aries disk okay the intensity distribution pattern here is mm, similar to that of fraunhofer diffraction at a rectangular slit that and with increase in the diameter of the aperture the radius of the central bright uh, disk decreases okay so with this we come to the end of fraunhofer diffraction at a circular aperture i hope this class is clear to all of you mm, go through the class the notes have been sent and if you have any doubts please do contact Thank you.